Hey, what's up? Leron here. And in this video, you're going to learn how to invent your own light and shadow in watercolor. Okay, so maybe you've encountered this situation. You look at the scene, maybe you're even doing plein air and the scene is beautiful. The subject itself is beautiful, but the light and shadow is a little lackluster. It's not as interesting. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to take that kind of a thing and extrapolate your own light and shadow conditions on it, maybe a stronger sunlight and all of the interpretive and imaginative work that's required to do that. So this is kind of working blind. You don't work directly from a reference. You change a lot of things up. And this means that our result is going to be a little wonky and require a couple of iterations. What I want you to take from this is you have not failed if you don't get the exact impression you want. It's just the first attempt. Okay. It's really important to remember that. And with that in mind, let's take it to the table and get started. So here's our reference photo. And as I mentioned, sometimes it's going to be so perfect that you'd want to paint it. But then when you don't have a light to properly guide you, <laughs> that's a funny uh, way of saying it. Uh, you may get lost. So in this one, I want to show you just that it is a possibility. You can make up your own light and shadow conditions. I'm going to keep the drawing simple, but I will uh, put a link or an annotation somewhere telling you where to skip if you want to skip the drawing process. Um, I know some people don't care about that. They want to get to uh, the painting. Okay, so uh, here is the bottom of this castle kind of around here. Now, the way I want to go about it is I'm going to put in the general proportions first and only then the final detail. So we have this wall to the left uh, and it goes a bit up like this. And then a bit down, we have this one of the main most visible towers here. Um, some of the rest of the castle. I'm really uh, fascinated by castles recently because it will have something to do with the comic I'm going to work on. Uh, that if you've been following me, you know, I talked a bit about it. Um, so here we go. This is a type of a beautiful, uh, I believe that's in Switzerland. Uh, I'm going to write down the details and the link to the reference below. So I've got the main uh, structure in here. We have that tower uh, at the back. Now it's time to break it off into the different sections. Okay, I'm going to do my best here, but it's not going to be terribly important uh, if we don't get it exactly the same, because again, we're going to make up our own light and shadow conditions. We're going to make up a lot of things here, uh, invent them. Uh, so it's fine. So we get got this main corner here of the wall. It goes wider, the lower it gets. This is very common with castles. Uh, so they don't sink actually because they were made of stone. Uh, so they had to use uh, wider bases to minimize sinking into the ground. Uh, so we get this left side of the tower and then we get the right side of the tower at a slight lower angle. Can you see this different angles? Because this goes to this vanishing point perspective. And this goes to another one. Uh, if you can follow the shapes, you don't have to know perspective exactly, but it will really help you. So I would suggest you check out a couple of videos on perspective drawing. Um, there is a bit of a detail behind another uh, couple of rooftops here. It's not as important. I'm going to wing this part with the paint. Uh, but in any case, here's another tower, the left side that's facing towards us, by the way. And then the right side. Now, the reason I do go into some detail with these sides is because it will be a big part of dictating where the light and shadow is going to be. Okay, so uh, we want to see the planes of the walls, okay, the different planes of the walls of the castle. Okay, it's that that's the main reason for this. Um, so we're done with this. Notice how, again, this also conforms to some kind of a third vanishing point. So we have this wall at an angle, this wall at an angle. And to be quite honest with you, I don't know if it conforms to the perspective or that's because of, again, the structure that gets wide around the base. Could be a little bit of both. Uh, actually, uh, I think it's a little bit of both. So here we go, another rooftop. Now notice how I'm focusing on the main lines of the planes. I'm still not getting all of these details, which are, by the way, now I know all the parts of the castle. So this is machiculations and we have all the crenellation, well, crenellations we don't really have here. Um, but all of these parts, I don't care about them yet. Uh, I'm not putting them in yet because they're, they, they don't matter right now. Okay. Now we have this tower it goes down like that. Here we have this sort of bridge that leads to the tower like so uh, leads to the castle itself, by the way, not just to the tower. 
Uh, my bad. And here we have a bunch of other towers. Now, again, some of these details I'm really gonna wing with the paint, so um, I'm not too worried about getting everything down as detailed or as perfect as I see it, okay? A lot of these things are gonna come later on. Now, there is a mountain ridge in the background. I wanna very gently indicate. We may get it just wet and wet. Now, we're done with the main structure, okay? I hope this doesn't bore you. I know a lot of people say that they actually love seeing the drawing stage. Uh, so now it's time to put in the smaller details. So here we have uh, the, all of the crenellations I was, uh, uh, machiculations, sorry, I was talking about. We have the tower here at the, uh, the um, side of the two planes, the meeting point of the two planes. I don't know what you call this geometrically, sorry. Um, and this isn't a, a tower, actually, it's a turret, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but in any case, yeah, here we go. We have the rooftop that's going to be a beautiful red later on. We have all of these, again, different um, architectural elements. But you see, even those, I don't have to get them really super accurately. Uh, just an indication can go a long way, and later on we'll figure out the details. And again, some of this is going to be in the light, some in the shadow, so it's going to be pretty um, open for our interpretation in that regard, so we don't really care. Um, notice how from the walls I'm moving to the uh, to other major structures, but afterwards I'm going to put in the windows. The windows and all of those small details come last, okay? It's not as important, really. So here we go, trying to preserve the structural integrity of the thing. Uh, we have these towers here. And by the way, this is Arsh paper. I ran out of Saunders Waterford. I opened a new roll of Arsh, and I hope it's going to function well. Uh, by the way, I'm putting the tree in more into the scene, okay? I'm moving it to the left so that I can put it in. Uh, so yeah, I hope uh, this paper is going to function well. It's not my favorite Arsh, I have to admit. Um, I much prefer Saunders Waterford, but we're, we're gonna make do, and Arsh is still a good paper, it's just, I heard a decrease, that there was a decrease in quality, uh, I'm gonna test it out now, because I remember I used to love it, and I was totally okay with it, so now you see I'm putting in some of the windows, I can make these up, I can invent them, add my own, it's not as important really, try to follow the general, um, um, what do you call it, like the general characteristics you see. So for example, I'm not gonna put a dormer or a window on the rooftops because I don't see any of them here, but I will put windows here, under just under the rooftop, because I do see them in the reference. So try and follow uh, the, the guidelines that the reference provides you, okay? And you can change things up, you can do whatever you want. So in any case, I think this is it for the drawing stage. I hope you were with me uh, all this time. If you skipped to this part, that's fine. You know, some people don't care about the, the drawing as much. They just want to get to the fun with watercolor. So now is the part where we have to plan this out. For me, in my mind, my vision is the light coming from the left. And what this means is that everything that's on the right, uh, in top left, by the way, the sun from the top. So everything that's on the right side is going to be in the shadow. Now this leads to some complexities. When we have this clear corner, then we know that all of this is gonna be in the shadow, that's fine. But then a couple of other things we need to take into account is, for example, this turret is round, so we can't get a sharp transition on it. It's gonna be a gradual kind of change from dark to light. Another thing we wanna pay attention to is cast shadows. This wall is gonna cast a shadow on this tower, and if the light comes from the top, the shadow is gonna be something like this. And this thing is gonna be also in the shadow. And then we get these beautiful triangles, you see? So you wanna bring all of this, you wanna take all of that into consideration. The roof uh, is, is also gonna cast a very small shadow, same goes here. You see, so all of these things you want to take into account and you wanna make sure that uh, you're aware of. Now you see this roof is kind of rounded, so we're gonna get this rounded transition from right to left, same goes for this one. Um, perhaps this casts a shadow and all of this is in the shadow, you know? So, and, and all of this is in the shadow and all of this is in the shadow. So you have to think about these things, okay? Uh, some of this is gonna be pure improvisation, I admit, and some of it is gonna follow uh, what we see. But we were, we're gonna get beautiful shapes of light and shadow here with this, you know, the different angles. Actually, this should be angled the same, so I'm gonna change this a bit. Uh, so we will get some interesting things going on here. I think this is going to be in the shadow and this is going to be in the light just to create some interest and I'm going to add some windows you know, just for the hell of it. 
So now, let me prep some stuff, we'll get to painting this. So here's the thing, with watercolor, with every step of the way, I know it can be overwhelming, so you want to worry about what's currently important. Don't worry about getting all the details and the, the, the finalized stuff yet. Let's worry about the first and second washes. Now, the light comes from the left, so this section of the sky I'm gonna make pretty light and yellowy, and then we're gradually gonna change into more blues and reds and all of those stuff, okay? I'm gonna use an initial wash that's very, very um, light, very gentle, very unassuming, very um, just, I suppose, allows us to have some possibilities in the future, okay? Uh, an initial wash that that is not gonna, you know, set things in stone too much. So let's get started with the left section. I'm gonna use almost only water here with my brush and just start putting in the sky. You see? Just a bit of this left section. Now, we don't have any white highlights to leave, so I'm not too worried about that, okay? We're, we don't have yet, like, pure white highlights here, okay? I'm gonna put in some yellow in the water. And that's gonna be kind of the direction in which the sun comes from. The sky is gonna be fairly yellow, as you can see. Um, and I'm gonna slowly add a bit of blue to them. And we'll see what we get, okay? Now, because of the light and shadow uh, conditions, again, we need to remember what the light and shadow behaves on the castle walls. But for now, we don't have too many highlights, so it doesn't matter. We're just gonna cover everything up uh, in a kind of loose and free manner. If you want to leave some highlights, feel free to. They can add some grace and some interest, but we'll probably not need uh, any of them, really, to be honest. Now, here's something cool. Because the light, the light comes from the sky and everything, the sea is going to be a little darker. So with the sea, we're going to add a bit more strength. Just a bit, not too much. And you see, I'm, oops, that's my phone. <laughs> and I'm going to get this wet and wet for the water. Now I'm gonna go back to some yellow. And you see nothing is too committed to anything, really. We're still quite free to change things around. I love to show a lot of colors in this stage, so uh, I am putting in some red, some yellows. I am trying not to go too saturated, which is a tendency I have, uh, because in the past I used to blend everything in, so now I kind of overcorrected and I'm going a little too saturated. I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, but you see, it's just a beautiful, beautiful first wash. Very light, very, again, unassuming. I can put more uh, red and yellow into the water under the castle uh, because that's going to be the reflection. So you see a bit of uh, yellow and red into the water. And this is just, again, we're not painting it exactly as we see it. We do have a lot of um, room for changes and, and things that we just want to do a little differently, okay? Now, at this point, you have to think, do I want to add anything else? Do I want to change some things around? Because it's still wet and you can still do it. I actually am going to put in a bit of green into the water and then just darken this ever so slightly. I do want the water to be a little stronger. We may have to strengthen them even more later on. Let's get a bit of this um, ridge in the background to, to look, to just be more visible. Um, and this is it, I think, for now. I'm gonna let this dry before I ruin something or overwork this, okay? I'm gonna let it dry, come back, and then start adding in the details of light and shadow. So this is fully dry now, and we actually have a lot to discuss at this stage. So a couple of things. Now, because the light comes from kind of the front and it pours in on the entire scene and it's a strong sunlight, uh, the water is gonna have some ripples on them. Now, I didn't do a perfect job in leaving room for, for these ripples, but it's still gonna work because the initial wash is fairly light. Now, this leads me to another thing. You see the mountain ridge? Its edge is fairly uh, blurry. There's a, something here. Uh, its edge is fairly blurry, so I'd actually like to contrast it with the edge of the water. So my plan is, like you see many times people do, and I think it's a beautiful little effect, to get the sparkles in from the right and from the left and leave the, the sorry, the shadows on the water from the right and from the left and leave the center section kind of sparkly. And that will create a sharp contrast uh, with the blurriness of the, the distant uh, mountain ridge. So I'm gonna mix something that's kind of a gray 
for the waters, um, the shadow on the water, I want this to feel pretty organic and natural. And it's usually not blue. Now, one thing that's important is I'm going to test it out. You see, this is what I'm trying to get. And I'm trying to empty my brush of water and get this effect. This is really hard. It's dry brush. Uh, I'm going to do my best and we'll see how it goes. But I'm definitely not a master of this technique. <laughs> uh, but here we go from the left to the right. Now I'm gonna do the same from the right to the left. It's actually gonna be easier if I flip this. Let's try it out. I'm sorry, I don't like doing this, but let's just give it a try here. I'm gonna do the same from this side to the left. And hopefully that'll make some sense, you see, as sparkles. I don't know if it will read as sparkles on the water because I'll actually have to darken almost everything up to get that effect. Because right now the entire entirety of the water is lighter. So let's actually do that. Let's go with the flow here. And get this first stage started with the water, you see? So we have these kind of sparklies. And to put them in the right context of being sparklies. <laughs> I like that word, sparklies. Uh, we're going to have to darken the rest of the water. Okay? Uh, just something to improvise. Remember, I'm not... Um, I don't have a reference... On, on how this looks, okay? So when you work from imagination, uh, you pay the price in some way, but you do get a lot of freedom and you can change things around and invent things. So uh, if I have to really give you a message is, don't worry about uh, this not being perfect in that regard, okay? Because again, when you work without a reference, you it's just harder uh, and you have to be imaginative and sometimes your imagination could use some work. Honestly, uh, mine definitely does. It's not something that comes naturally to me. Uh, but in any case, don't worry about all of the this section. It can be also a little, um, uh, a little, what do you call it? Like overworked because I'm gonna put in shadows for the castle, so no one's gonna notice it. Now I do want to try something out and strengthen the shadow. We're gonna get to the castle in a moment, so don't worry about that. It's the main subject of the videos, you know. So uh, I just wanna darken some of these up, you see? Just to get the sparklies to read better. Now, we're gonna move on to this section, okay? Uh, we'll see, maybe I'll make some uh, adjustments here. Again, I didn't really prepare for this fully. <laughs> what I think we'll do now is move on to the castle itself. So I'm gonna go back to my larger brush here, actually. And something very common you will see is the initial wash is quite co colorful, but then the shadowy wash is a little more muted. Uh, that's something that I often do, and I like to do that because the shadows tend to not have as many colors in them. They do have colors, they do have, you know, you see in them, but it's more nuanced, I guess. Uh, so here we go, just mixing up a bit of a, you know, muted kind of area. And I'm going to get started. And I'll, I'd actually like to start here on the left section and start from smaller details. So I'm going to put in the shadow that's right under the uh, rooftop here. Actually, I'm considering let's get the rooftop in red and then put in the shadow. So I'm going to get some red and yellow here. And I actually like them to be muted. I don't want them to be too strong. And I'm just going to put in a fairly light, but still obviously reddish value for this part. And then I'm just gonna accompany it with a small shadow underneath. I know it's gonna blend back up. I don't care actually about that, like so. Now we do see a couple of windows, so I'm gonna put them in. And remember the light and shadow conditions I'm going for are a little stronger than in the reference photo where everything is kind of um, uh, dark. Here, I want there to be a strong contrast. So I'm actually working around all of these uh, details and adding in a little stronger um, brush marks. Now we're actually, we may cover the mountain ridge too, uh, because just to get this wall clearer, okay? It's part of, um, part of um, matching your plan to the reference photo, okay? something that you have to have flexibility and do. This entire thing is fairly dark, but I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna leave a bit of a highlight here on the left. Now it's rounded, so I'm gonna smooth it out, like so. Just get it a little gradated. 
Now here we get to an area that's kind of shadowy. So I'm going to pull around that you see a rounded shadow going from this rooftop of the turret and I'm going to cover the right side and here we're going to have a nice interesting pattern of light and shadow like that you see a couple of these rounded shapes and this all connects to the right side okay that's fully in the shadow but it's still a shadow that you can see through. Remember, the shadows are still quite transparent. Okay, now I'm gonna go over this and smooth this out as well. Remember, it's a rounded shape. And I'm gonna pour back some red into, uh, sorry, not pour back, but rather put some red into this rooftop here. And then go back to my uh, neutral mix with some more blue and yellow like so. I could even use the uh, burnt sienna here. And I'm just gonna continue moving this wash along. I have quite a lot of water on my brush and that's because I do want this wash to flow. And remember that um, it's still quite transparent. So we don't need this to be too dark. Now here, notice this beveled part of the wall. We need to take that into consideration. So we have the, the shadow coming through here. I'm gonna expand it a bit all the way to the bottom. And then when it dips into this part, it may go a little higher. I'm not sure, it may go a little lower too. And then this entire left section's in the shadow like that, you see? Now I'm gonna fill in this entire shape quickly because I want this wash to flow. And here we get to another, and again, this is improvisation. I don't know, we're inventing our own light and shadow, remember. When you do that, you don't know exactly where everything is. That's just a part of the, the price you pay. I'm gonna go a little cooler near the bottom here. And now here you have to take into consideration the edge. So I'm actually gonna leave the ground a little lighter. So I'm just gonna go like this, you see? Now here is the right side of this wall. So it's all gonna be in the shadow, but let's, before we do that, add some of these details in of the machiculations and connect them to this line like that. And then we have a shadow under this rooftop like this that pours down and we have the window. So you see I'm connecting as much as I can. And we actually have the rooftop as well. So let's get that in fairly lightly because we need the left section to be dark. So we go like this. And it's just shapes, just treat these things as shapes and try to convey the shapes you see while understanding it's not gonna be exactly the same because we're making stuff up. Uh, this entire section is in the shadow, so let's quickly connect these two so we don't lose the evenness of the wash. And then let's get some stronger warm color, some red, some burnt sienna and get the shadowy side of the rooftop. I'm leaving a bit of a highlight here so they don't blend too much. And it also looks cool. Again, we can change things up, remember? Especially in this kind of an instance where we're really making things up. And let's get this wall quickly in. Now, to be honest, a lot of this is in the shadow. I'm gonna put in a bit of water. It looks a little too dark. Uh, a lot of this right section's in the shadow. So I'm actually gonna just put it in the shadow. I consider sparing a, a random rooftop or something, but let's let's put it all in the shadow. Uh, this is gonna be in the shadow with the shadows for the windows. You see, I'm just slowly rendering the shapes. This rooftop, I would love to put some light on it. Um, let's, let's go like that. Let's leave a strip of light there. I honestly don't know if it makes sense, but I just want some interesting shapes within the shadow. And now we have to move a little quickly. I would like this entire thing to be covered to some extent because later on I'm gonna add some shadows within it. Okay, so don't 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 make life harder than it needs to be. Okay, just if you see an area that's on the shadow, don't be afraid to cover it all up. Um, like so. Now what I would like to do, let's get a bit of a cooler thing going on here um, is figure out how to connect this area to this structure here. Let's leave it for a moment. We're gonna go back to that. Uh, and here we have all of these things in the shadow. Now notice this 
Um, tower is a little more exposed to the sunlight, it's a little taller. Um, of course, we do have some details here at the back, but still, I'm gonna make it taller than it actually is, perhaps, and put some major parts of it in the sunlight. Okay, so here we go, a couple of shadows, um, and it's a rounded shape. So we're gonna put in this diagonal shadow from the wall, and then have this shadow, and then we're gonna blend it right in, like so, see? A bit more water, and I do have a couple of videos on blending techniques, so if you wanna check these out, uh, just to figure out the technique a little better. And we're gonna go through here, through there. I lost some of the uh, wetness here on the right side, so it's gonna show, but I'm fine with that. And I think we're almost done here. I'm gonna add in this shadow here. We're gonna blend that later on. Now let's add some of the roofs here. Again, pretty warm. And they're all rounded, so we'll blend most of them in. Shadow here, shadow here, shadow here. Let's blend. Again, my Skoda brushes, this is a Perla brush, so it's the white, uh, white hair brush, I love these. I'm actually gonna move this red more to the left to get it to cover the left side of the rooftops, they're also quite um, dark. Now let's continue with this brush, because we don't have, uh, the areas we need to cover now aren't that large, so I'm gonna get a bit of burnt sienna. I don't know why, I wanna get some warmth on that tall tower here. So I'm gonna go over the rooftop because it is dark. It's not as light as you would think and then I'm gonna connect this With the shadow, but I'm gonna cool the shadow. So we'll have this beautiful Temperature play we don't get a strong one really here just because there's the red and the red is quite cool, too uh, So here it's gonna be a little more accentuated and then for the left section We'll just go like this and cover it up negatively around the shape of this thing. Don't forget to add the windows that are visible, so something like that. We have the details on the rooftop, and these will add a lot of interest on all of the rooftops, by the way. And we have a flag here, like that. And we're gonna have to, uh, oh, a part I forgot, really messed this one up. This is a rounded tower too, so we're gonna have a shadow on the right, and then we'll have to blend it. So let's do that. And I love how this already gets this very looming, kind of threatening, uh, impressive look to it. Now the trees on the right are gonna be just this kind of a wet and wet, um, dry technique, see? Really don't, I don't want them to be that uh, strong. Um, Let's go like that over this, maybe add a branch or two. But this is all they're gonna be about, okay? Just an indication off to the side. Now, we do have these parts in the background. I am gonna darken them and make them a little more muted, perhaps. So let's do this kind of a thing here. I am considering how, I sh how I'm gonna keep this rooftop interesting. Let's just do leave a little highlight here. It's not exactly what I planned because this rooftop is facing us, so it should be in the shadow. Uh, so it's kind of a compromise and hopefully it will work, you see. I'm gonna just go around the shapes I already have. It'll make them pop a bit. We're gonna have this, hopefully you can see all the details. I may zoom in, you know, digitally, just to make sure you can see everything. This is all in the shadow. And I need to get used to the arch paper again. As I said, I ran out of Saunders. They don't uh, import it anymore, unfortunately. So here we go. Some of these small details in. Um, and now what we have is the general, you know, structure of the castle. Let's get the lower part here. Um, the shadow on the rocks, okay? So from the left section, we're gonna have some rocks in the in the sunlight. So I'm just rendering some shapes of rocks here. I'm gonna keep a lot of gaps between them. But once this turns away from the light, I'm gonna start darkening it more. Um, 
what do you call it, like more densely, okay? And again, I want to leave this part light because that's kind of a, uh, a ground that still is struck by light. This shadow does leave a sliver of a highlight there. And here again, it may face some of the light, so I'm going to leave some gaps. And this area, I'm just going to get real quick because I want to let it kind of blend into the distance. Now, we do have to take into consideration all of these shadows and reflect them in the water. So let's do that. Warm uh, reflections that are a little bit of a lighter version of the original. So you see, I'm just mimicking what I see up top, okay? There is this highlight here that I may want to preserve. I kind of forgot about it, but that's fine. It's still going to read as a reflection. Reflections are very forgiving in some ways. You know what? Let's get rid of that. So something like this. This entire thing. Uh, I do want to maybe let's leave this triangle. So something like that. A triangle of light within the shadow and just cover the whole thing up like this. So you see it just makes a little more sense as a reflection now. Now this mountain, let's let's just flatten it a bit and, and make it gray and send it to the background. I don't know what, what's gonna happen, but I do feel like this wall has to be clearer. Uh, so I kind of put myself in a conundrum here. Uh, so you see me kind of figuring it out as I go along too, so that's fine. So I'm just gonna get it in one go. I'm not gonna fuss around with it too much. This paper has a pretty strong tooth to it, so um, a little stronger than the Saunders Water Fort, so I'm still getting used to it. I used to use it a lot in the past, but I haven't in a while, so. There we go, and at least this wall now is clearer. Now let's add some windows as the rest dries, and then I'm gonna add some details within the shadows, and this is what's really gonna pull this together, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So a couple of windows here in the light. Now remember that if the light comes from the left, the left side of the window is gonna be in the shadow. So if you have to convey a larger window, you'll actually go with the left and maybe top, like this. You see like a, an a upside down L shape. Uh, just something to think about. Um, maybe a bit of a couple of windows here, even though they don't really exist. You see, we're pretty much done. Now, let's just let this dry and then add these uh, details that I was talking about in the shadow, okay? We're pretty much uh, done with this stage and I don't want to add just unnecessary details. So we're almost done. The next and final stage is going to be to add some shadows to it, which means details within the shadows and also stronger shadows within the shadows. I'm gonna do this fairly dry here. Uh, so I'm just mixing, you see, I take a lot of pure blue, a bit of pure yellow from the bottom, a bit of pure red, and then I wipe some of the brush on the towel to get rid of it. And let's just get started. Uh, I can test it out here on this paper, see that it works. Now, a couple of notes I wrote down for myself. Look at this as a first iteration, okay? Don't worry if you feel like you messed it up. Um, I definitely got a lot of things here wrong, but I also got a lot of things right. Uh, when you look at the overall shape of light and shadow, I think it's a very clever um, way I set it up. Uh, I think it works really well. The thing that may not be as good is maybe the water. You see, it doesn't convey enough of the strong direct sunlight. So you'll always have a bunch of things that, and you see I'm just adding in some of that those windows. Uh, I'm gonna add this line here to make clear separation. Uh, you see how that helps? I'm gonna darken this arch here uh, at the windows. Again, don't beat yourself up, especially if you do this kind of work, especially if you're making stuff up and changing them. You have to remember that um, this is speculative work, really. You don't know what you'll get. Um, and the most important thing, I think, for, for me to to transfer onto you is the mentality of this is a first attempt, okay? Because if you quit now and you're like, okay, this thing doesn't work, then you just lost. But if you're gonna look at this as a first attempt and say, okay, I gave it a try and actually did pretty well for something that I'm doing blindly with no real reference and not following a real, so to speak, uh, conditions of light and shadow. So for something like that, I actually did a really good job. Uh, and with that in mind, the next attempt I'm gonna do 
is going to be much better and I'll learn from it and I'll, I'll learn to leave highlights where I forgot them and I, I really can't get the paint to do what I want, it's annoying. I can't get the dry brush effect I wanted. Uh, in any case, um, so I'm going to, next time I'm going to improve so many things, I'm going to try some uh, things differently and see how uh, they work. Um, and it's gonna work out beautifully. If you, you have that mentality, you haven't really lost, you, you won. Because you're just gonna do another attempt and another attempt uh, until you get it to look the way uh, you wanted it to, okay? So I think that's the main point here. You know, I love to teach techniques. I love to teach uh, the different ways of controlling the paint and, and different ways of, uh, you know, approaching the painting process. but. The most important thing, the thing I'm most excited to share with you is that mentality. Because that's what's gonna get you to improve. That's what's gonna get you to um, get the results you want. That's the thing that's gonna accompany you at all times when you feel like you're not happy with your result and you wanna give up. That's the thing that will carry you through this, not the techniques and not the, you know, all of that kind of a thing. You know, you, you get the techniques down pretty fast and I know you may say it's super hard and you find watercolor challenging but still you get the technique and from experience from my students the technique is something you learn pretty fast what's left then is just believing in yourself and in the, the process uh, and even when it it looks like it's failing uh, you treat it as the thing it is which is an attempt okay an iteration a try you tried it it worked or it didn't work and then you move on to another one you no one says you need to get this painting right the first time you know no one says that no one decides that everyone teaches us that you know that that failure is wrong no it's not true this, that's just one iteration you see so i hope that makes sense uh, and with that i think i'm gonna wrap it up i'm just trying to figure out what else needs just a little bit more of a of a touch here um maybe a bit of a reflection here just really random um, hmm, what else? This I want to keep fairly light. Let's just get a bit of this moss kind of feeling. Oops, that happened twice today. Um, I'm not used to these brushes. And oh yeah, there's a fence here that I want to put in. So let's do that. Kind of like this within the shadow. Maybe a couple of details that break through this line. Uh, but I think other than that, we're done. I hope you, you see how much depth and information just getting a few touches within the shadow can add um, because once you have that shadow in it can look quite flat if it's just one shape but once you add all of these windows in all these small details it makes the shadows pop a little have more presence you know have more uh, more depth to them I can even add some of these reflections in the water um, you don't have to but you can um, and one last thing you can do for selected areas, you don't have to, but for selected areas, you can add some details on the rooftop itself. So I can go like this, add this edge of the rooftop, and perhaps add some um, hint of the shingles. So just going like this with the direction of perspective in mind, and just get a couple of these in for one of them, and that's more than enough, you see? Uh, now we're gonna wrap it up face to face. Thank you so much for watching. One last thing I always forget, let's remove the tape together. I'm gonna do that now. And let's see how this arch paper holds when you remove the tape, because you know the, the worst types of papers will rip. But it's still arch paper, so it's gonna probably hold on very nicely. It's still one of the best papers out there. And here we go. Final result, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up face to face. So this is it, I hope you enjoyed this process. And once again, look at this as a first iteration of many. No one says you have to get it right first time. This is really important to remember. It's just one attempt, I actually love this. I think it turned out really nicely um, when you think about the fact that I didn't have a real reference to work with. But for the next time, I'll know, I'll add more sparkles on the water, I'll keep the, the initial wash a little more yellow down there. You know, a lot of things will change. Um, but this is kind of an experiment because you don't know once you get more experience you do know and I have to say very proudly that I have quite a lot of paintings I did planner in which I changed the light and shadow conditions pretty significantly and got the result I wanted really accurately so it does happen and sometimes you get lucky sometimes something about the reference really speaks to you and you can make that up sometimes from a photo you'll get a better result you know just test it out try it out for yourself uh, and I hope you enjoyed this one and don't forget to 
you can design very freely with light and shadow. You can change the height of the sun. You can change all sorts of things and look at it as experimentation, just trying it out. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to check out my frustration free watercolor course. The link is always in the description box below. If you want to learn how to paint freely, enjoy the painting process. I've been getting a lot of good feedback recently. A lot of people are <laughs> stuck at home and so they uh, take the course and uh, a lot of them enjoy it and I think it's a good time to um, really master watercolor. I'm going to try and produce as many good videos as I can for you here on the YouTube channel as well just for you to enjoy and paint while you're maybe in quarantine and all of that. Well, let's hope we get through this uh, quickly so stay healthy, stay safe and I want to really thank you so much for watching. I will see you again real soon.